Mississippi has an embarrassment of literary richness. William Faulkner, Eudora Welty, Willie Morris, Margaret Walker Alexander, John Grisham, Richard Ford, Richard Wright, Shelby Foote, Barry Hanna, Ellen Gilchrist. All of these are category killers and help define their respective literary genres. We are constantly surrounded, past and present, by literary greatness. So when a daring group of people ask, what if we transformed one of Mississippi's most beautiful public spaces into a celebration of its greatest contribution to the world of ideas? And what if we could get that nationally televised for all the world to see? That spark created the Mississippi Book Festival, an annual event held at the state capitol that we like to call a literary lawn party. And while I would love to talk to you about what will happen in the next 200 years, the next book festival is just 200 days away. <laughs> We're a little busy. The Mississippi Book Festival, we hope, sets the bar high for the state of Mississippi to honor our writers and, our book, and nourish the next generation of book lovers for all time. We chose the Mississippi State Capitol because of its architecture, but also because it's the center point of our state. Galloway United Methodist Church. This is Eudora Welty's home church. The State Capitol grounds. All of these spaces create a literal playground for authors to connect to, to fans, for booksellers to sell books, for organizations like the Mississippi Library Commission, the Mississippi Arts Commission, and the Mississippi Humanities Council to set up shop on the lawn and promote, as they do day in and day out, arts and culture in our state. I'll share a few numbers with you now. In our first year, 3,400 people attended the inaugural festival. Last year, 7,600 people participated in 42 panel discussions located in 10 different venues across the Capitol complex. Also just last year, 89 funders contributed over $350,000 to fund the festival. As an independent book festival, we are extraordinarily grateful for the support both from public and private sectors to help fund the festival. We could not do it without them. Our mission is to promote our own authors, to celebrate what we do best in Mississippi, right? But one of the things we aspire to do is to bring authors to our state. And at the end of this year, we will have hosted over 700 official panelists in the state of Mississippi at the Book Festival. Also every year, eight hours every Saturday, C-SPAN broadcasts our events live. That gives an enormous amount of national positive attention on our city and on our state. It's a huge amplification and shows what we do best, live from the state capitol. It is hard for me to believe, but on August 17th this year, we will celebrate our fifth anniversary. I, I thought this morning, who better to start us off than Mississippi's first lady of letters, Eudora Welty. A very young Eudora Welty. And I want you to look this morning, look at the steely determination in her eyes. And I wonder, when I look at this photograph, if she knew the independence and courage she would demonstrate through her writings. Or if she knew the number of influential writers she would encourage and mentor and the legions of others she would inspire with her words, or that she would deliver standing room only lectures at Harvard University, creating one writer's beginnings, which would go on to be a New York Times bestseller, or that she would persevere and in 1973 win the Pulitzer Prize for an optimist daughter. All serious daring starts from within. I love this quote because it reminds me of a memory from my childhood. I grew up in Austin, Texas, and one day my mother and I were driving through our neighborhood, and at a four-way stop, a girl not much older than me ran by our car. And I followed my mother's gaze, and I'll never forget what she said next. 
that girl is going to set the world on fire. Set the world on fire, I thought. I could have wondered what my mother saw in that girl. And I could have wondered if my mother was capable of, I mean, if that girl was capable of setting the world on fire. But what I wondered at the time was, how does one person set the world on fire? How do I set the world on fire? And that thought has stayed with me for the last 35 years, shaping my drive and determination as I've written both my story both personally and professionally. And what I can tell you is that the, the spark from, comes from within to set your own fire. If you're going to create something new, it comes from inside of you. As I mentioned, I'm from Austin. Austin has been, has been described as a really cool city surrounded by Texas. <laughs> and I've also said that Jackson is much like Austin was in my youth. It's a really inspiring and encouraging and energizing city. And there really is a can-do spirit. My family and in my community, the message was always try. Just try. Failure is part of the experience. The same city that produced me produced things like the Austin City Limits Music Festival and South by Southwest. The organizers behind those events faced highs and lows, but they persevered and they created what is now the cultural landscape that Austin enjoys. The one thing that I had never experienced before moving to Mississippi was inertia. It never occurred to me not to try to do something. So when I moved here, <laughs> this presented itself as a challenge. We don't do that here. And what I have learned is we don't do that here is slightly better than she's not from here, <laughs> but not nearly as bad as bless her heart. <laughs> so I had to dig a little deeper, and I had to try a little harder, and I had to push some more boundaries if I thought I could help shift a collective thought process. How could we make something happen that people just were not willing to organize and get done? We faced many struggles in those early days. And I can assure you that I did not think, there were times I did not think that we would have a second anniversary, much less a fifth. Would anyone participate in the Mississippi Book Festival? Would anyone fund the Mississippi Book Festival? Would anyone volunteer for the Mississippi Book Festival? Would big authors come to Jackson to participate? Would John Grisham lend his name and his reputation to the inaugural event? Would C-SPAN broadcast live? And no one thought that the Mississippi Book Festival could contribute millions of dollars to the economic impact on tourism, creating a new travel industry catchphrase, literary tourism. But guess what? All of that has happened. I share all this with you to say, expect resistance when advancing new ideas. Inertia is real. And the thought that you can do anything comes from within, you just have to try a little harder. The journey from we don't do that here to look what we do is not an easy path. And the one thing you will need along the way is help. Collaboration is key. Now, a few of you know this here, many do not, but I am an identical twin. I have always had a partner in crime. I have always enjoyed collaborating with someone else. And my sister and I will tell you that one idea sparked by inspiration, shared and considered, will lead to some amazing experiences. It will also lead to some really bad decisions, but together <laughs> we could get out of anything and right the ship. So I was very fortunate early on to find like-minded friends who I knew with the right direction we would set fire to an idea that would put Mississippi on the literary stage like it had never been before. And I remember an early meeting with Jerry Nash and John Evans. We were talking about the difficulty of getting the funding off the ground and how hard it was going to be to start the festival. And I looked at them and I said, do you want to celebrate your second year or your 25th year? And they said, we want to celebrate our 25th year. And I knew in that exact moment that so much would be required of so many, and that I had just committed 10 years of my life to this work. 
but I was very grateful for their support. They are still actively involved as, as board members of the book festival and are friends to this day. Here's an early clip of when we first made our plans publicly known um, in the Clarion Ledger. Once we made our plans known, so many rallied to the cause. They finally got it. They saw it. They understood what we were trying to do. Every year, over 200 volunteers sign up to help put the book festival on because they say yes. We could not do it without the number of volunteers we have who work for months start to finish to make the book festival what it is today. One of the things that was critically important to us when we started the book festival was it be authentically Mississippi. There are so many great book festivals around the United States. The National Book Festival in Washington, D.C. The Texas Book Festival in Austin. The Miami Book Fair, the Decatur Book Festival. All of these organizations have, many, have done so many great things and there's so many lessons we can learn from them. But if we were going to burn down the we don't do that here roadblock, we had better do it in our own way. That is a sonic boom. They opened the inaugural Mississippi Book Festival on the states of the state capitol in 2015. Only in Mississippi would you see that at a book festival. One of the things that I believe is important is that life is that there's a celebration. And one of my favorite memories from the book festival is in the very first year we hosted a luncheon in honor of Willie Morris at Hall and Mouse. This was all John Grisham's idea, by the way. John was going to deliver a speech, and we were going to celebrate Willie in the place he really called home, Howlin' Mouse. So we planned the whole thing, and I walked in, and I saw Ellen Gilchrist. And she looked at me, and she said, hello, Holly. And her, it was her voice. I had never heard her voice before. And it was not the one I had imagined or made up in my mind. It was even better. And she said my name. When she hugged Greg Isles, when, when John Grisham took the stage, surrounded by so many significant writers, important writers today, and book lovers and bookstore owners and people who were there for the cause, in that one moment I was so proud of our work and of our state. We had done it. But I also knew that there was still so much work to be done. And on our best day, my hope is that the work of the book festival is sustaining and preserving Mississippi's role in a larger literary terrain. And I also hope that we're encouraging the next generation of writers and nourishing their next generation of readers for years to come. I started the, today this talk with a quote from Eudora Welty. She's one of the most significant writers of the past century from right here in Jackson. Her work transcends her Mississippi roots her short stories, her novels, her nonfiction endure for all time. And I would be, believe she'd be proud of the next generation of writers we're producing. Desmond Ward, Greg Isles, Angie Thomas, Michael Ferris Smith. I also think Eudora would be really proud of the work we're doing at the festival, that so many national figures come to Jackson every year in August to celebrate the book festival. And I think she'd be proud of the work that we're doing and the people who helps come celebrate. Two years ago, we were honored to have the first African-American Librarian of Congress, Dr. Carla Hayden, visit the book festival. I think that would thrill you, Dora, to no end. But also one of her old friends stopped by. Just to say, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy to be here in, in Jackson at last. And, and I'm going to say just a couple of words about the fact that I did once uh, have the good fortune to, to have lunch with Eudora Welty. And, and at the very end of the lunch, she very sweetly said to me, would I please come and visit her in Jackson? So here I am, Eudora. <laughs> <laughs> That was Salman Rushdie, and he joined us last year at the festival, and he was really a gift to the festival um, to participate, and we are grateful for him. I do not stand before you today to tell you what the next 200 years hold in literature. I will tell you that there are written stories, there is a narrative, and there are stories that only can come from a place as special as Mississippi. 
But I will also say to you that there is a spark in so many of you to start the next great thing, to, to push through the next idea. And it is in danger of being ex extinguished if you do not find the fire within. Expect resistance, ignore the naysayers, enlist support those, of those people you trust, and light the fire. Thank you very much.